All right. Um, next, I'm going to be assembling this teapot here. I just trimmed it, and um, you know the shape looks really nice. And uh, I'm going to be assembling the uh, the spout and the handle, and um, and the lid. Of course, I already threw it earlier. It's over here, so it fits just right. I didn't have to do any modifications. Like I said, over over the years, you know, with experience, you can just eyeball this the the diameter of this thing, and then just you know, or rather the circumference, and then voila, it fits. And um, and now I'm going to make the um, the handle here. With, with the handle, all, I, all I'm doing is I'm just rolling a little taper here on both sides. Get it nice and tapered, and then I'll just tap it down. And then I'm going to use the, this knife for this little these little strike. I'll pick it up and then very, very gently create that curve that I like. And I like this curve, and this is when I use my heat gun, the magic heat gun again, and stiffen, up, stiffen it up just a little bit, just so that I, when I pick it up, I won't distort the, uh, that beautiful pattern I just created on, you know, on the handle. Once it's done, Right here, I leave it aside, and um, now I'm ready to assemble the uh, the, the spout and the uh, the handle. Now I'm going to assemble the uh, the spout onto this this body here. Where do I put it? Usually I put it just at the the lower end of the shoulder, and then just poke a hole in there, and, and then just turn it up, and then there's my hole. And um, and in order to assemble it, I use this paper slip and just get some slip on it and then just press into it and there it is okay next I'm gonna assemble the um, the uh, the handle here the overhead handle and all I do is I just score this a little bit and then just very, very carefully place it on there. At this point, of course, while it's stiffening up, it's very, very fragile. But once it's stiffened up, uh, it's actually, you know, pretty uh, strong, especially with the glazing too. And then it holds up right here. And the sort of the final step that I do is I'm going to. Um, Give the uh, the spout just a you know slice off, and that determines the shape of this thing. It either you know at this point the spout is pointing upwards. It's it's sort of reading that this part is going skywards, and I want it to come right back down sort of to earth. In order for me in order for me to do that, all I do is I take my knife and I just very gently cut off just a little bit of the spout. Just by just by this this slight movement here now, you know I've made I, I've redefined that little shape a little bit. So now the spout has a little, you know, finish there, and the there's there it is. And then sometimes I'll just have to you know move this thing a little bit to make sure it's straight. I've laid out a slab here, and earlier on just rolled that slab out, you know, with my rolling pin, just roll a nice thin slab out to let it stiffen up so that I can assemble this this at the bottom here and um, in order for me to do that sometimes I just take off just a little bit here that I don't need the clay and then all I do is I just slip this here and then just Stick it onto the slab of clay that I have, and then just cut off just an extra bit. And then just wrap the thing back, and once I have it sealed, and I sit it on a sheet of newspaper so that I can, so it won't stick to this laminate base here. Now I go back in and just kind of do the polishing touches, just finish off what I need. 
here. Push the thing on the base here to seal that. And that should pretty much do it. And then once I have this done, this is when I go and, and add my feet and create my spouts. Okay, I set it down here. And to make my, my feet, all I do is get a little bit of clay, roll it at a taper, this way, and then create my striations again. And then I kind of curl it. And there's the second one. This one's cracked, so I'll try guess I'll guess I'll make another one. Okay, in order to create my spout, I'll, I'll need this, this little, I guess this little bamboo stick here, this little skewer stick. And uh, all I do is I create a little taper here. Make sure you get your hands a little bit damp so you don't um, dry out this thing. Get a little taper this way. Take the stick, poke it inside, push it through there, and then roll it back again. And then from here, Okay, from here I expand the inside just very, very gently. And then once I have it expanded this way, like that, I put it back in there and I'm going to tap it a little bit to get it to be somewhat triangulated because I'm trying to get it to fit these lines. So that. And once I have it this way, the shape that I pretty much like, then I take my tool and my cutting tool and I just sort of slice off just a little bit off the edge here and then from here I'm going to bend the spout just 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 more for looks this way that way it kind of sits like that it accentuates the form and I'm going to set it back up here so you can just sort of see it, and I'll just usually play with it and see, you know, where where I want where I want the uh, the, the thing to be. It all it all kind of varies. So what I do is I leave it out here, let it stiffen up a little bit. Take my heat gun now. And it's very very soft right now. So in order for me to 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 play with it, I have to stiffen it up just a tad. Once again, I'm stiffening up just the surface here, and uh, I'll do the same with with my feet here. I need to get them just stiff enough, just enough for me to, to fool with them. Get some of the moisture out. Okay, um, now I'm going to try to assemble these, the, the, the spout, the feet, and then I'll make a, a, a handle for that thing later on. But at this point, in order to assemble the, um, the, the feet, all I do is I cut this in half. You, that's why I always make a couple more because I'm trying to look for the ones that, that, that kind of visually will match. Once I have them sliced up this way, in order for them to, they, they don't sit very well, at least I found out in the past looking, doing it this way. So in order for them to, to, to fit nicely, all I do is I take my knife and just create a flat spot here, this way, with all my little feet. This way, and then spout sort of the same way. Just give the spout just a slice so that I can just there, decide where I, where I want it. Okay, and then now I can just clean up all these edges that I don't, you know, find a little bit offensive sometimes. So I just clean them off just a little bit. And at this stage it's just all taking, taking care of all the little little things that I, that I, you know, don't like. Cleaning up the bottoms, cleaning up all the stuff that's picked up. 
and then I'm ready to assemble. Okay, now I've made the assemble, get my slip and just at four corners. I almost never score now because of the paper slip, so it's been a, it's been a great, great thing that, you know, with the paper slip. In the past, potters used to have to have to slip them all the time. You almost don't do it now with this um, paper slip. Make sure it's well mashed in there, and then just give it a tap, and it's pretty much there. Okay, at this point, I'm just looking at where where I would like my handle to be. Um, sorry, my my spout. So it it appears that right there is going to be pretty good. So once I've determined this, the the spot, just poke a hole, slip it on both sides, and then just ever so gently, just press in there. And it should hold up actually pretty well. Sometimes when it doesn't, all I do is I take this tool and go back in there and just just make sure it's sealed. And there it is. Okay, and then I'll just find a hole. I'll just kind of cut a hole very, very simply, just get a shape of the hole. For the opening for the um for the lid. And at this point, I don't know how wide it is. Yeah. So all I do is I just use, usually I have this is the size of the tool. Just open it up. And it should fit in there. There it is. Okay, in order to make my um, handle, it's sort of a reverse process here. Roll my clay. back into this taper shape here. It's sort of a bigger version of the um, larger version of, of, of those little feet. Bang it on there. Get these little striations back up there. And then just curve it. I'll, I'll always kind of play with them. If I don't like it, you know, I'll change. And I'll start again. I don't restrict myself to anything. It's just, you know, whatever floats my fancy at the point while I'm building this thing. If I find something else that, that's nicer, I'll, I'll just go to it. But um, at this point, this seems to be... the shape that I'm enjoying here. So I'll take my heat gun. Stiffen it up just a little bit. Then I'll just slice off this area here to create a flat spot. And This little nick here is important, it seals it. There it is. It's one miniature teapot complete. And then later on when it when it when it's all dried up, I'll just go and clean off all the you know, all those little uh, 
bloopers that I've you know created so I almost don't touch it now with porcelain uh, the advantage is I, I can take care of that when it's dry when it's totally dry but while it's still uh, when it's so soft and, and when it's stiffening up I almost never go back and touch anything and that's sort of a trade secret you know that I discovered but here's the second piece okay um, now I'm going to try to finish these these oval pieces here and uh, before I do anything first I'm going to cut away this now that they're stiffened up just enough for me to slice them off once again these these um at this stage is incredibly incredibly fragile it's what it's a stage that I call soft leather hard so I'm very very careful in terms of handling it I don't man handle it at this point I just uh, very very real gentle with it now I'm actually gentle with it all through the process it's just sometimes because I work so fast that it doesn't appear that that I you know I'm, I'm being very gentle with it but uh, porcelain doesn't allow you to to you know to to handle it you know really roughly because any time you do that, because it's so such a soft material, it'll uh, it'll mess up. Okay, now I'll slip this thing. First, I have to check the uh, the striations here. So. It goes about right here. And then slice it off. Okay, and I just clean up all these edges here. What I'm doing too is I'm actually trying to seal the joints. Usually I'll, I'll, um, I'll wait to stiffen up before I clean off anything. Okay, it's pretty much right there. Okay. And then I'm going to assemble, I mean, uh, put a spout on this thing. Get this tool here. And the same with my spouts. A little bit too small. You just get the rough shapes of it, and then um, because the the advantage of working with porcelain is you can go back when it's when it's when it's dry, totally completely dry, and then redefine you know all those little odds and ends. And then from here, once again, I like just cutting off this little thing here, and then it gives it a nice finishing. Okay, now I'm going to finish off this piece with, by you know with with a handle. And usually it's just just playing and playing and playing that that I that I rediscover each you know each handle. Uh, in this case, with these pieces, uh, I've discovered that this shape and this technique um, has been really beneficial for me. So, what I do is I roll a little bitty handle, and then smack it under the piece of paper so it won't stick, and then just 
create these little striations again. Very gently. And a lot of times I don't know whether it will work or not, so I just make them and then, and then see if it, if, it, if it will fit the technique. It will fit this, this, these pieces. And then from here, create that feet. I'm going to roll these little bitty feet now and then just pick it up gently and then slap it on the paper so it won't stick. And then just have these little striations here. And then pick it up and gently roll it again. Ever so gently. And then once I get them made, um, I'll dry it up with, the, with this heat gun. And, and once it's stiff, now I'm ready to assemble. So I take my fettling knife, always get it a little bit damp, and then just cut the thing off. It's the dampness that allows me to slice the thing off really, really easily. And this is when I start to play with, you know, when I want to, how and when I want to assemble it. Uh, it Shape-wise and everything. So usually I'll just go and from experience just roughly know where um, I'm going to assemble these things. Out just a little bit, and then take my handle, and there it is. So once I've determined that this is the the place that I want it to be, I pick it up and add some slip to it. And this slip looks kind of yucky and ugly, and black and gray. But uh, once you fire it, it burns away, so you almost don't see it. Um, so there it is. And then I'll just go ahead and just. Make sure it's it's sealed. And there's my piece. What is so exciting about looking at a sleeping tiger? Nothing. But if you take a stick and you poke it, you'll remember that tiger for the rest of your life. This is a passage from a conversation at the Minnesota Zoo. In many ways, it, uh, it parallels my attitude towards clay. Pushing limits, testing waters, searching, and exploring boundaries. By nature, my mind is very visual. With this alluring and sensuous medium, clay, I've interacted transformed, concreted, and authenticated my visual impressions into pots. It has added a new dimension to my life, one that I desire to share with others.